30 years ago, we moved to this location from Calgary, where gardening was not exactly a uh, popular event, but we uh, were very happy to find this place. We bought it from the original builder and owner, and uh, we were going to make our garden. So the front that you're looking at here, of the property, uh, had no flowers, very few shrubs, but it was, the entire front was treed like my neighbor's is right now. So we had the trees removed and we decided to put in a front yard garden. We did have a few limitations in that our uh, water service is only a half inch uh, copper line and uh, so we have a limited water supply. And water restrictions didn't exist 30 years ago in this part of the world. So uh, I had to try and find a uh, micro drip system to water the garden. And that's what generally started the design of the system that I'm going to show you, which we still use. So we have three different designs in the front garden. And uh, maybe we can have a look at them now. So the, uh, the bed's about four feet wide. And we've got a drip on that side. And then there's, of course, another one here. And uh, again, that seems to have worked over the years. Now the main part of the front garden uh, uses a minimum amount of uh, plastic connectors and uh, what I found works is just by looping the ends so we have but every two feet just loop it from the house back to here and this means that there's no connections to be made you just keep drilling your holes and making your sleeves well, on this side uh, we uh, instead of making the loops I've used T's that uh, you can see over here Every two feet, there's a T, and uh, the line goes to the edge of the property. So either one works well. Uh, it's a little more expensive to do the the T's, but the spacing is easier to maintain because with the loops. They get moved around with the cultivation and all that. This tends to keep it in place. But either one is functional. This, this is the irrigation system and has been for most of these plants for the better part of 30 years. To build a system, I generally start off with a 100-foot uh, roll of uh, half-inch poly pipe. And I just checked the other day, uh, Home Hardware sells it for about $22 for a 100-foot roll. Uh, you can get 400-foot rolls that are a little bit cheaper, but uh, I found a 100-foot roll uh, is adequate for the kind of work that I'm doing. So the first thing you have to do when you get the roll, <laughs> you have to open it up and lay it on the ground because when it's in a tight roll it'll twist and you can't work with it so you have to lay it out in the sun preferably for about a day 
And then when you've decided on uh, what you're going to water, you have a number of fittings that can be helpful. Uh, if you don't want to make a loop, and you can make quite a tight loop without breaking it, uh, a loop like that means you don't have to use a fitting. If you need to have a right angle, uh, that's one of them. And if you're going to have multiple uh, runs of uh, cable uh, or uh, pipe, uh, this T will be helpful. And in addition to that, if after you've built it all, you damage it, this will fix the broken pipe because it's just a connector that you can insert. There's valves that you can still purchase for this pipe. They're plastic and uh, you can control them that way if you like. And finally, to start the system, I use a uh, connector like this that has a, uh, a stainless steel wire filter inside. You can see the system doesn't use any metal clamps, so when I make the connections, I fill a bucket of water like this with boiling water, dip the end of the pipe in the boiling water for a few seconds, and it'll just slide over the connection uh, very quickly. And when it when the plastic cools down it's just fine for what we need There's one more thing to make the water come out and that is that where you want the dripper to be you just take a 1 16th inch drill and just drill it into the pipe and that's it So then, to make sure that the dripper doesn't spray all over the place, I make up a sleeve from the same pipe that we're talking about, this half inch poly pipe. And I cut about a one inch length of material and cut it a second time like this. and place it over the hole. And the reason that the sleeve is over top of the hole is because otherwise it would spray out not exactly where you want it and the whole purpose of this is to make it drip. So this sleeve will make it drip. I should add that there are uh, some people on particularly on the Gulf Islands that are on well water or they're using a, a rain barrel for watering, uh, then you don't have to build the sleeve. You just let it drip out of the, the hole. Uh, I should mention that uh, all of this is above the ground except where it goes to another location. Uh, and that's necessary because you have to uh, look at it from time to time to make sure that it's working. It isn't totally maintenance proof because these holes do plug up. Uh, when they do, I just have a piece of wire that I push in the hole and that frees it up. Generally, whatever is plugging up the hole is blown out by water pressure when you move the sleeve to one side. Okay. So once a year I flush the entire system because at the very end the pipe has been bent over and I have a plastic sleeve that's just one and a half inch uh, plastic pipe that I slip over. 
and that keeps it closed during the watering season and then to flush it out you just pull it off open the pipe the dirty water comes out and that's it so to start this system I attach this hose I'll let this drip for a couple of hours about once a week and that seems to keep the plants happy. I hope that if you have drip systems in mind this is one you might consider. It's inexpensive, it does require some labor, but uh, it is permanent uh, at least in my place. So thank you very much.